The next is a Moana Surfrider's um, One Night, One Winter Night, or what's it called? <laughs> I can't remember what the title of it was. This happens to be uh, Maddie's place, an alt. One Night in Winter, there we go. So you start off in this little enclosed um, building area space. It looks like um, some of the big um, sandstones for the walls and such. You don't know what's being used for the, the base of the portal area. Um, so then you're required to go up this little spiral staircase made out of hover part pieces. And of course, the center bit being the mesmerizing turning bit of the uh, Winterfest fence post. So it brings you up to a, a, a different level. Um, and then, of course, the stones for the pathway. Lots of, uh, I think this is the, the gray, uh, gray um, cave thingy. <laughs> I don't know what the name of it is. It's one of the new pieces. It looks like a little stone, um, almost like Fred Flintstone time. You know, it's a little cave thing made out of rocks. And I think this is the entrance of it. And you kind of set inside it. Maddie would know. Yeah, Animal Den. There we go. The gray Animal Den thingy. Um, so here you have... Uh, you know, keep in mind this is well above the ground level, so everything ground-wise is built from scratch. It's just a combination of probably snow clumps and snow-covered stones and and uh, snow-covered trees and bushes and who knows what um, to create this landscape here. Um, here we have a frozen lake with a little bit of moving water laid underneath to kind of fill in the holes that the lake or the frozen water actually has with a little bench to stare at the frozen river, frozen water. Um, on this side you have the waterfall going in <clears throat> and then the rushing water leading off in the distance somewhere. But first that you come on to um, from the entrance is, of course, the little village here. Um, most of the homes are faux. I couldn't figure out how to actually get into any of them other than the one that's clearly got a, a working door. Um, but you are allowed a sneak peek inside. Um, so it gives you kind of like um, a little voyeuristic kind of thing where you can kind of peek in the windows. Um, the construction of the houses themselves, there's a combination of a variety of items from pillars to walls to, um, well, this one has, uh, I couldn't even tell you what all that is. It looks like uh, the tiki bar for the little windows here and that the orange part is probably the orange, orange, orange window. Um, This part, little shiny bit here, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, that's what I suspected um, for the reason behind the, the a lot of the faux buildings, which I said before, that's probably the number one reason um, for faux structures on plots is because they've just gotten to where they don't have the, the decor space to allow for it. Um, I think this is the Draken fireplace there. Um, and those up here, the windows, are the metal uh, dividers. And obviously all the homes are topped with snow clumps to make sure that they're all snow covered. Got a few icicles here and there. Um, this door appears to be, this looks like the bar that's on the front um, kind of cogwheel thingy of the uh, ornate chest. And then this is the back of one of the pictures. 
and then just sandwiched in with uh, pillar pieces, um, the Orin table, a tree table for not only the display here, um, but also the staircase leading up. That's um, one of the Orin windows. Uh, again, the table's used extensively in this little part for not only the, the outside bits, but also the little shelving here. Uh, I presume this is the, the florist you come and get your plants. On this side we have um, the butcher shop. Lots of pillars here. That might be a book for all I know. Um, this little handle thing reminds me of the one that's on um, one of the draken pots of the spikiness there but I could be wrong about that as well. Back of the shades Eve window. Is that what? Let's see. Let me see what you're talking about. Is that the shiny shiny bit for the door back here? Is that what you're talking about? That could be it. I guess it'd be the spooky green window. Yeah. Okay, then we come to the bakery. Um, again, it's the Draken fireplace, but then to kind of extend that out, they've used the uh, Draken fences, kind of build up the wall here. Let's see, the door handles, I believe, are um, vintage beer mugs. Again, that portrait the back would be used. And then the little details here is just from the um, tiki bar being repeated. Again, draken fences, pillars. Um, looks like orange walls, but it might be too smooth. It might be a different one uh, for that. It might just be um, orange floors. They're a little smoother, I think. Uh, this one for the door is uh, the metal divider again, but this one up here, that's the actual, I think it's the rectangular window uh, for that part. Um, the handle, I want to say, is the back hinge piece to one of the lamps. That uh, could be the... Um, or an hugel lamp or something like that. I'm doing a lot of guessing, and Maddie's here to kind of answer if I get it really wrong, wrong but I'm trying my best here. Uh, this is a little food shop. I kind of envision it as being like the all-night kind of store because everything else kind of looks sleepy and closed, and then you got this one that's open, so, you know, maybe this is the all-night store, but uh, they just have a variety of foods. Um, you've got... <clears throat> the uh, food troughs here. Uh, I think this is the filled one, so it has the little fruit balls in there, but this is the empty one, and they've just added some uh, bushes and stuff to make it look like lettuce or something. Little fruit basket up here. I think that's the actual um, one of the windows that has the, the little basket on the end. Uh, one of the keyhole windows, I think. Um, I don't know which one offhand. Oh, so I, I was right then about the, the all-nighter thing. But we have, I think, one or two nearby, but uh, we never are out at those odd hours that they would be open, so <laughs> I don't know. Um, the little trays here are the water troughs, um, just being used as little containers for the asparagus sticks or something and the mushrooms and that kind of thing. Uh, the faux door in the back is a... It's either the dark, I think the honey one is lighter. I think this is the dark wood divider. Um, the building's construction itself for this part was mostly, it looks like, um, a combination of hover part pieces and uh, that cellar door again. A lot of people like the brick that that has for, you know, for different texture. 
I don't know what's causing it. That might be the bottom of a gift um, thing to make it look like a nice bright window. That uh, I think it's the humble gift, and they've just tucked it in so you don't see the little gear corners. I suspect. I don't know. Could be something else. Might be an exonite piece for all I know. Um, we'll talk about the bridge in a little bit, but I wanted to show um, the. I don't drown out here. The uh, the wheel for the bakery, where you presumably mill your own flour and stuff. They got the wheel back here. Again, it's a combination of uh, looks to be hover part pieces, and I don't know what's being used for that gear bit. Got some lights in set to kind of lighten it up, make it more visible, all the different details to it. And of course, the waterfalls coming off of it. Oop. Back up in here. Uh, don't want to forget to talk about um, the tree here, the center. It's got those flaming habanero bushes in there. I don't know which tree that is. Draken training pillar for the, the little knobby bit on the wheel, apparently. I have one of those, but I can't bring it to mind what it looks like. Um, don't want to forget to mention the breadstuffs in the bakery window. Um, you have a loaf of bread that's kind of broken off. These look like little hot buns or something. Um, and then you got this weird, it could be a loaf of bread, it could be one of those like round cakey things, um, but they just kind of arrange the, the unburnt toast in different ways to kind of make different loaves. Okay, over here um, is what I presume is the school, because um, you can kind of see there's some desks, benches, um, like a teacher screen over there, teacher's desk here, someone's got their little book bag over there. Again, you know, it's it's a way to kind of uh, elaborate a little bit on your faux buildings, but, you know, keep it restrained, you know, so that people can actually go in. Frustrating, but, you know... Now, if that's the requirement, then that's the requirement. For the, the main construction, I think it's uh, Draken pillars and Orin um, arches and floors for the walls. Uh, this, again, looks to be the back of a, another picture. I think this is the metal crate, uh, just because the handles, there are always those oddly crooked things. And um, they just got it peeking out just enough so that you see the four corners and the handles itself. around back there we see all of the design again I think it's just um, metal dividers for most of the windows that are lit up like this this one appears to be orange pillars crisscrossed here and there kind of hard to see I think the handle is the one that's on the flower pot. Might be a book or something for the door itself. These look like the ornate pillars for the little bits here. Gothic pillars maybe, that's the word. Um, hover part pieces for this part with some worn um, walls there. Okay, Maddie says the tree is made up of um, the umbrella pines, but stacked a bit to kind of give it a bit of height. That makes sense. Okay, this one I think is uh, the clothing store where you go and get your outfits. So they have a number of mannequins in the window, uh, red drapes for the little backing back there, um, orange cylinders for the little pedestals 
um, for the stairs here, I believe that's orange shelves, uh, the one that costs renown, and it's got that little doohickey on the bottom that uh, kind of feels a little odd. Uh, this door looks to be um, one of the garage-themed um, coffee tables stuck up there. And then in the little gap that it usually has, because it has like a little inset part, um, then they just stuck one of the... Uh, metal dividers in there to kind of make the window. Um, but yeah, you see the, the shelf here with this little doohickey underneath. Uh, exile walls for the red part, and of course, again, the foreign pillars for that, the rest. Um, I presume this is like the town hall, um, or maybe a bank or something. Uh, so you have uh, the Gothic pillars used a lot, and it's um, kind of, you know, old-fashioned look of a building. Uh, Draken floors or part of the tower here, the clock tower. The clock itself looks like it's made out of, uh, well, the Merg Dynamite for the hands, the heart collection lamp for the, the center part, and I don't know about the rest. <laughs> looks like a combination of, uh, like, an engine part is what it reminds me of, mostly because of the blue that's under there, so I don't know maybe a, a snowy piece to kind of bring out the white in the center that's a big guess on my part i have no idea <laughs> maybe maddie will confirm if that's an engine part or not um for the the bar area that you can actually go inside again the construction is mostly hover part pieces um and orange uh walls for the exterior same way with the little balcony here with the red drapes Dressing it up a bit. Going inside, you'll see that there's little booths. Yeah, spaceship windows from the event. I, I can't remember the names. Most of that stuff I don't use regularly enough to kind of keep it in mind. And of course, none of that new stuff is added to like sites like... Um, uh, Living in Wildstar and stuff. And while we do have the decor shopper built in with Katia's add on, a lot of times I don't like overlaying that over what I'm working on. I like to have a separate window for it, you know, since I have the, the two screens. And um, so, yeah, I, I just don't retain the names of that stuff. I know it's spaceshipy stuff, and that's about it. <clears throat> So yeah, um, hover part pieces, uh, a lot of people are really starting to fall in love with these, these bits because they're uh, a lot of them are very versatile and use, being used as not only furniture and not only um, architecturally for buildings and stuff, but other things. Um, so here you have a combination of not only is it being used for the seats, the tables, well, this is the domes for the tables, and then the, the pillars and the walls. Uh, a lot of hover park, hover park stuff. Uh, the little, um, I guess you call it the tablecloth or something, the little decoration in the middle, looks to be um, uh, an orange tree table inset into it, and then the greenery around the candle is just one of the, um, the Winterfest wreaths. And they've done that with each one. Uh, the fireplace in the center. I think this is one of the stove tops. And they just kind of inset it and covered up the bottom part. So you just mostly see the top to act as the vent. Um, campfire for the fire in the center. I don't know what pieces are being used for the little bits around it. Could be bowls. It could be the bottom of... Who knows what. <laughs> this, I suspect, is probably part of the, the stove itself, but I don't know what this is here. Then you have the bar, which um, is a combination of several bars. A uh, little bowl for the sink here. You've got some um, airtight container there. That, I believe, is some chests 
is just the bottom of them and then the magnetic um, containers for the little drawers here. Uh, inside the bathroom, you have windows acting as the mirrors. Some uh, Cassian curved walls and walls for the interior of that. Then up here you have another little faux door, presumably to the bedroom areas or something. Um, okay, Maddie says those bits are just all part of the stove, so. so the rest of it is just kind of hidden behind, behind these bits. Um, here, which we could probably look at better outside, is the, the little patio terrace kind of thing. And they've just got it. Since it's winter, not a lot of people are going to want to eat outside, so they've got it kind of stored away until the weather clears up. Okay, from the main part of town, then you follow the path out, and it leads you to the little church mausoleum thingy. Again, it's kind of faux. You can't actually go in it, but um, it's a, a thing to look at and see that there's um, the uh, lots of use of the draken pillars, the draken walls or floors or whatever they're called, probably the arch as well, um, the gray stones, for the archway here and of course the stained glass windows I'm gonna hop on my board here and move along there you have a little that I heard my phone ringing all the doors are closed so the phone's downstairs and it's really hard to hear Anyway, um, you've got the little snow lops with their little different hats. One's a bowl, one's a soda cup. Here, here's the terrace again. We saw the frozen lake, so let's move on to the bridge. Okay, where is that path? The bridge. Again, it kind of resembles the archway of the church thing. Um, so then you have the archways here for the little bridge. It's made out of lots and lots of stones. <clears throat> and of course, it just leads off into the little winding water out there. Here we have a little fountain sitting area. And then a little path leading up a little snow covered area here. And we start getting our first big taste of the winter festi. I mean, there were some touches um, throughout the town and stuff. And of course, the entranceway has got that big candy cane looking thing. But this is where you start really getting into the, the winter fest side of this particular plot. So you have the Looks like the Draken fence is being built up to make this nice um, big windmillish tower thing. And then when you come out here, you have this little takeoff strip or something for um, the, not Papa Phineas there, it's the Giggle Megafo, but he's getting ready to take off with his sleigh. Um, whereas most of those that have been doing the, the winter fest lays and things like that, most of them opt for the um, Rouse Tower. Uh, this one decided to go with the Vint plushies, um, which technically, I guess, makes more sense because they do float as opposed to the Rouse Tower, which just munches on grass and, and that kind of thing. Um, Chains for uh, most of the reins, uh, but also uh, the hanging wires or whatever, for the little harness part. Um, a combination of wooden 2x4 and uh, granite pillars 
for most of the construction of the building itself and the little platform here um, with the orange pillars as decoration. The uh, sleigh itself is a combination of uh, exile cylinders and hover part pieces and it looks like orange walls and curved walls to make up the whole design with a few little details like the um, party lanterns and things to kind of uh, decorate it up. Just going to go along the side here so we can see the full length and design of the building. Then we'll go inside. Now remember we're way above the ground level so they had to devise a way for, to bring us back down so that we could gain access to some of the interior areas um, like the bunker house and stuff. So here we have like a kind of a mill kind of thing system going up. But as you go down this little winding path, you'll soon see that it's not really a mill. It's more a contraption of raising the presents that have been collected from below to bring them up upstairs in a more efficient manner. So you have that whole little pulley system going on. So while we took this big long spiral staircase up, uh, we now have this long spiral case back down. Thankfully there's the glass here to keep me on the path because if it wasn't there I'm sure I would have fallen by now. <laughs> So here we have um, the very bottom, you had the one gift uh, little bucket going up and then here's one being loaded by a little protostar fellow. And you come down the little cave area and you see another one, he's bringing some gifts or a gift uh, to be loaded up. These are just parts of the uh, Winterfest gate being shown rather than the whole thing. And you come to this little cave system where it looks like um, that's where the little protostar guys live, I presume. Um, so you have these little faux um, houses built into the stone. You've got um, this one's made out of, looks to be, uh, maybe it's a picnic tabletop part of it or the back of the picture for the wall part. And then you've got orange windows for the windows and the door and then um, files for the door handles. Same way here. It's a lot of orange windows. Um, maybe it's a wooden table, the round wooden table as the top for all of these. Um, there's any number of wooden pieces that you can use to kind of uh, put it together. Just a variety. And then you see this little mechanism here. I think it's the vent feeder, the Winterfest vent feeder. Um, just tucked in kind of upside down and it's shooting out these gifts and then somebody will come by, load them up on the little trailer and then walk down the path to the little thing. <clears throat> we'll save the bunker house which happens to be right here for the last. We'll go down the rest of the path to the main little house and uh, this is actually the haunted house fab kit. It's just hidden behind a uh, a combination of stones and the foreign leaf window and they've got that little bit tucked out just to make sure that if your little button doesn't show you can actually click on it. <clears throat> so here we come to an actual personal residence here. I don't know what pieces they're using for um, this little design up here. I suspect it's one of the pictures, picture frames or something, but uh, a lot of layering here. Hover part pieces for the archways and some of the main wall bits inset um, with uh, actual portraits like the tree portrait and things, landscape. So here, up here we have uh, the bedroom. made out of the bed itself is made out of a combination of uh, two by fours, uh, orange pillars, sleeping bags, 
and I believe the pillows are um, just uh, part of the uh, bookcase or whatever it's called. Book bag. What is that thing called? Backpack. There we go. <sighs> Book bag. Backpack. One of those. <laughs> okay, so Maddie says the entrance is um, empty trophy cabinets tilted just so that you see that little wooden design there. Uh, a lot of people, when they come to visit houses, they miss little details like that. And uh, I don't know, I, I kind of have an obsession of pointing them out. So you can see it's carried out throughout the house. Little design. So empty bookshelf. There you go, people. Now you know the secret. Um, the cabinetry here for the closet space, I believe, is um, gear trophies with um, the Hugo portraits as the handles for them. And then wooden 2 by 4s for the trim and the, the divider line there. Yeah, here's the backpack. And I believe it's the same thing that's being used for the pillows on the bed. The little um, hat rack here. I believe is the exile shelf just kind of tucked in so that you only see the little teeth part. And this shelf here is of course the orange shelf just tucked in. Uh, the little table here, um, including the little rug beneath it, I believe is the uh, heart collection table, poppy table. And then they framed it with one of the portraits, either it's the Lumini portrait or whatever, that has that gold little bit around it. And then um, one of the Dominion, maybe it's uh, the conference table or something inset to give that extra little bit of color to kind of match the couch. <clears throat> oh. Well, Maddie says that the wardrobe area was meant to have some mannequins dressed in Santa clothes, but they were experiencing the bug where even though they only have five of ten uh, mannequins out, it wouldn't allow them to put any more in, which I've heard a lot of people experience that issue. And, you know, other quirky bugs. Um, this looks like a combination of the, the bowls, um, the habanero bushes and then the flaming habanero like bushes. Uh, the little lanterns here, those are just the ore and lanterns that's been inset. So you don't see the pole, you just see the, the little curly bit. The little um, window ish kind of thing here, that's just a bunch of the, the trellises or whatever set there. Wow, that was loud. <clears throat> so that's the bedroom. Then we go down into the living room. So you have the staircase, which is again a combination of hover park pieces. Um, it could be just an actual staircase, but it also could be um, two by fours laid out individually uh, with the orange floor down below. The wall pattern that kind of gives it that funky wallpaper kind of look is just the um, Winterfest fences um, sandwiched together to make uh, an interesting ovalish repetitive pattern around the walls. And they've used um, the gaps um, as um, where they would hang the different kinds of pictures and stuff. The uh, sconces on the walls, I think it's just the orange sconce, but then they've dressed it up a little bit with the um, Drake and cauldrons to kind of just make it a little a little different than those bright orange bulby things. The couches or the sofas are made from uh, curved exile tubies and um, cylinders with uh, green pillows as the cushions. white things for the walls. Oh, you're talking about the white um, 
uh, bit for the wall itself, um, Maddie says is the bottom of gear trophies enlarged in sailing. Yeah, that's got to be pretty, pretty big. Um, the anyway, the uh, coffee table, of course, is um, uh, Draken monuments arranged um, to behave as the the base of the table, and then just framed windows or glass pieces um, arranged in a way to make it look like an interesting pattern for a glass tabletop. The little rug area, again, I think it's part of the um, foreign, uh, the, the heart uh, collection coffee table. Uh, it almost reminds me like a butterfly shape. Yeah, um, Maddie's just explaining that it Typically, it wouldn't look as hazy in a home setting as it does here, but part of that haze is because it's in the um, haunted house fab kit. And in that fab kit, that particular setting, it's got that continual hazy, spooky look, you know, because I, I don't think they anticipated people using it beyond uh, uh, a haunted house kind of thing. Um, but obviously, our builders are, they like to think outside the box and um, are wanting to use it in other ways and we have to get around it creatively as far as the lighting goes. We just have to accept there's a little bit of funkiness to the to the lighting. So it has this kind of a, a, a hazy look to it. Um, the fireplace itself, I think, is mostly um, gothic pillars um, being used for that. Um, the wall trim on the bottom, I believe, is just uh, two by fours laid out in a certain pattern to get that um, little paneling look. The garland for the mantle is just um, over overgrowth, leafy overgrowth, and then balloons for the red little berry things, and of course the candles. Wow, Maddie says um, they had to use 32 lights in this one little area, this one little house area to make it, to brighten it up as much as it is. And, you know, that's part of the price that we pay. Um, the little coffee stand here is a combination of, looks like, um, Exile Dome, a column, and I'm not sure what the yellow part here is. Some kind of window, maybe? The display cases are uh, exiled domes, curved walls, curved glass. Um, looks like some pillars. And then just filled with a variety of objects. Again, it's always a good place to display things that maybe doesn't, you know, don't necessarily... Um, go with your theme but you want to put it out there anyway it's, it's a fun way of adding it in and Maddie confirms that it is a window it's the uh, the pink foreign window I should have recognized it because it's got that little pointy bit to it right here this little extra nubbin that the rest of it doesn't have but oh well Uh, let's see what else we got here. The uh, dining room area part of it uh, looks like the nautical uh, chairs just completely put out there. I don't know if it's a combination of chairs and then the couches too, or a couch um, to give that whole long little bench area and then of course uh, hover part pieces for the table itself rugs for the table runner again they repeated the two by four bits from the trim in the one room and added it in here to kind of tie it all in the kitchen itself um is i believe um I guess those the countertop would be the bottom of the gear trophies again. Is that what that is? 
The sink is the water trough. Um, I think the actual kitchen sink item is sunk down underneath to allow um, the actual faucet and stuff showing through. The uh, wallpaper or the tiling for the kitchen are the uh, humble gifts, I believe. These things are really, really shiny if you look at them a certain way, but they've carried the the motif not only from the walls but for the um, the cabinets as well. The handles here, I believe, those are the bottoms, uh, the bottom nubbins of the um, foreign dresser, if I remember correctly. And yes, Maddie confirmed that those are uh, <clears throat> the bottom of the ear trophies. Uh, let's see, the oven area is just the uh, blue light lounge table and all of the cabinets are framed in metal edged wood just to kind of trim them off. And of course the stove top itself is an actual stove item that they've just inset and pushed back so you only see the, the top part that they want you to see. The uh, refrigerator. Um, looks to be just a ship hand locker and then I think these handles here come from um, one of the uh, tanks the tank items I don't know which one offhand it's not the vent tank I don't think I think it's the other one the multi valve tank I think uh, then we go into the bathroom you have the little tub area here. The faucets are the tops of, I think it's the short file, and then the faucet itself is, um, it's one of the horns, the falcon horn or something, and um, yeah, see so you can see that's the top of the, the small file and that's being, it's being used for the little knobs. Um, uh, a hollow dome for the tub part and presumably either one of the, I think it's one of the waterfalls just kind of tucked in sideways so that it looks like uh, some, some water there. Shiny water. These are some of those new um, spaceship lights that we got from the space chase stuff. Two by fours for that little bit. Um, this, oh gosh. The handles, I think, are the tops of um, the one of the wine bottles. Then you have, um, I guess it's one of the Orin windows for the roundness. For the color here, I'm not sure. I suspect it's maybe um, another bottle or possibly uh, the bottom of this. Yeah glowing space wheat. It has kind of a bluish color as well. The little cabinet doors here are just curved orange walls with um, bottle tops for the handles, I think. Looks like um, a sparking wire for the towel rack and of course bowls for the sinks. For the toilet, we've got um, uh, hover part pieces for the, the little seat that you sit on. <laughs> well, I'm just doing my best guess, Maddie. If you can't uh, remember yourself, that's that's fine. Um, the um, Orin tree table for the lid. Um, the tiny chew cup for the little flusher thingy here or in um, cylinders uh, and things for uh, and the hollow dome for the, the bowl itself. Um, for the little um, toilet paper dispenser handle thingy, I believe that's one of the, it's the handle for the firewood. 
um, thing. It looks like a little ba metal basket and then the firewood's in it. And I think they're just using the, uh, the handle of that for the little rack there. Not sure what they're using for the blue on the floor. I presume it's the white here is another enlarged um, uh, gear trophy, but the blue one is either um, a tiny blue crystal, perhaps. Uh, maybe it's even a, a folded shirt. That, that's a nice kind of sort of flat blue. Um, but yeah, so that's the interior of the little home. We have one final place to check out, and that would be the Bunker House. Winterfest poster again. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> so off into the um, Bunker House area, which presumably is the toy shop. So right off the bat, you've got these... I think it's like some kind of engine piece, and then it's the planters, the portable planters for the decoration around that. I guess um, either poster backs or uh, gear thing for the white again. And you come into this really huge but small um, toy shop, so there's lot to look at so we're going to try and take it a bit of time. I may scatter myself around here and there just to try and catch all the, the bits. Um, this is what I call the um, gift wrapping station where uh, you'll see these little chutes where the the uh, toys are sent down and presumably the train would go around and collect them as they come out the chute. Uh, so it's got to be perfectly timed so that it doesn't shoot right out onto the track, but <clears throat> you can see like one plushie's being sent down the chute and he's going to land in the little bucket here. Um, but once they're on the train, then I guess the little protostar guy grabs it and then he wraps it. And this is like the little wrapping station. So you've got a variety of bags and boxes and uh, things that are being used as wrapping paper. Uh, the bows and stuff and um, so it's kind of trying to show you the process of it's in the process of being wrapped so here's a giggle me gaffo plushie ready to be boxed up and uh, wrapped and everything so I think it's just a combination of an open cardboard box and a closed cardboard box just laid in a particular way that looks like that once they're wrapped they're sent inside this little um, contraption. So remember above ground we saw something similar where they're shooting them out. Well this one's just sucking them up and sending them up uh, up the way. So that's why the packages are kind of floaty. Um, the track itself is, um, it looks to be two by fours and then um, I suspect uh, metal planks. I could be wrong on that, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, the wheels for the little train cars and everything um, look to be some of those new uh, spaceship light pieces. And the cars themselves are um, hover park pieces. Which ones? I couldn't say, but it's somewhere in there. You can go through the 80 or 90 that there are and find them yourself. <laughs> uh, the little cars are attached by the cables, of course. Um, oops. The chutes that the plushies are running in and most of the construction of the room itself is all hover park pieces. So again, it just gives you an idea of the versatility of these pieces. You know, depending on how you combine them, they make all sorts of things. <clears throat> Frame glasses and curved glasses. I'm not sure what part you're talking about. <laughs> talking about the bottom, the floor. Anyway, um, the train uh, engine part itself is a combination of the lights, the hover part pieces, the festive emblems. Oh, the train tracks. Okay. All right. I see what you're saying. The tr the the metal part is actually curved glass. Okay. 
that does make more sense. <laughs> Frame glass and curved glass for the the metal part. Yeah, I probably would have taken more pieces if it had been just the straight um, metal planks. Um, we got some engine parts for not only the front uh, thing but also the exhaust here, <clears throat> and of course the uh, Winterfest uh, fence posts kind of dress it up in a holiday light. So that's uh, that central area. Then you have um, what I presume is the world map of where all the gifts will be delivered. Um, so you got all these different little uh, uh, mailboxes where all these um, letters to Papa Finney's are coming in. You've got some uh, overnight packages. Uh, it's basically just um, carpet boxes kind of inset. Same way with the letters over here, it's the uh, edge of the um, humble gift, I think, to make it look like there's little letters here. And uh, of course the map itself uh, is a variety of things from, uh, gosh, what is all this? Frozen Lake, I think. I don't know what the green part really is. Um, some of the bits, I think that's like part of uh, the tree shelf, you have that little mark. Um, this little emblem here looks to be um, either wall or triangle pieces um, placed just so to make that little north, south, east, west symbol. Um, Probably snow-covered stones or the bottoms of snow-covered trees or snow clumps for the white bits. Uh, the little blinking mark up here is the combination. I think there's two different little blinky lights that we have, a red one and um, a green one, and they just overlap them so they it changes color. Okay, uh, Maddie confirms that the green part um, is actually uh, snowy platforms uh, and they just happen to look green in the lighting um, which is kind of strange if you think about it <laughs> but you know there you go there's some different things uh, I don't know what these bits are I assume some kind of a tree or bush it might be I can see the little bits of mushrooms so it must be the the ruby eyed thinker um, bits looking for some of that green stuff the brown not sure what those are maybe books maybe table i don't know what's the dark blue just gonna pick maddie's brain here while we've got maddie on again hover park pieces for all of the staircase all of the wall bits um, the leafy decoration that they've done, that's just the orange chair that they've inset and hidden most of it, so you can't see it. We're going to go upstairs while Maddie works on answering that last question. Um, here we have a little bathroom area. Presumably the bathroom is behind the door. Um, the handle, I believe, is, again, the little handle thing that you see. Um, uh, on the red um, flower pot and uh, of course the symbol on the door is the uh, festive emblem. The door itself I believe is the flat metal table and then it's just framed up with some uh, foreign uh, pillars. The bar that you see here I suspect that's from um, I think it's the bot analyzer um, I'm not sure about that, but I think that's what it is. And uh, of course, they've repeated the window, the the mirrors and stuff um, from previous area. And then, of course, the faucets here are actually the garden hose skins, I believe. So Maddie says the dark blue on the map is just the frozen water turned upside down, so it has a little different look. <clears throat> and yes. 
it's confirmed that's the bot analyzer it's got this i think it's actually two um, bars on the front and it's got that like bright blue flashy bit and they've just got most of it tucked away so you can't see it and they're just showing the one little bit so the first little um toy station uh, we come across is the the pillow um maker so we've got a little sewing machine made out of a combination of things that look like some of the uh, first, I think it's the Protostar, uh, I don't know if it's the humidifier or something like that. Um, a couple of the festive emblems. Um, it looks like two of these, one for the top, one for the bottom, to get this kind of like a little sandwich thing going on. For the needle, I am not sure about that. I would have thought um, a good needle would be um, the plain dart, but I don't think the plain dart is that green of a color, so I'm not sure what that is. Um, and then it looks like one of the new spaceship parts on the top here. The little scissors or shears or whatever, um, it's just a couple of kitchen knives. Um, and then they've inset some pillows and uh, I think um, top of the ore intent. Uh, this I think is to represent the pincushion maybe and that's just some fabric that they're cutting out to you know give the idea that they're um, making the pillows. Oh okay so uh, the needle, um, Maddie says, is something, um, one of the spaceship hulls or something, and there's a little spiky thing, and that's what they're using for the needle. On the next booth, um, we have the, well, it's primarily the little dollhouse maker, but they also have some, a plushy doll and a little um, cart up above. So they have their little parts. Um, their little hammer, some wall bits, some stuffing for the things, a little paintbrush with some things that they can put together. Um, and you'll see that they've made a few um, out of a variety of things. I believe the little trees here are the tops of that uh, ornate orin pillar. Um, and then just use different windows and things to kind of come up with a little house structure. Same way with here for the little mushroom topped orange houses, a combination of windows and uh, little doors and, and cylinder pieces to make it look like a little house. On to the next station is the Hugel Maker. And they also make clocks, dressers, and little gondolas. So the hat for the protostar guy, I believe, is the top of the Winterfest fence post. Uh, mops being used as the brushes. Over here, you have a little bigger selection of tools. It looks like little tacks and hammers and like a double-handed saw, um, that kind of thing. Over here we have the bookmaker, so he's got his little his little book press going on. Maybe it's a printer thing. I think this is the print the the covers, and then this is to press it out, make it stick together. I don't know. The combination of I think this is the top of the exile bed, with the gear on top, maybe sparking wire for that middle bit, and these two ends here. Um, over here we have the guy that makes the choo-choo trains, among other things. Kind of hard to see what's inside it. This looks like a shadow box of some kind. Um, but the train itself is made out of um, uh, exile chest, I think. It's the one that you get off of the uh, vendor for uh, Renown, I believe. Um, the wheels are uh, files. There's a hanging chain that's joining all of the cars together, um, a beer for 
the uh, the engine part, and then a cup, soda cup for the top, the little place where the smoke comes out. So then you have all of those parts laid out over here, again with some additional tools and things where they're putting it together. Over here we have the snow globe maker, along with other items like the pulsating Phineas thing and the creepy nutcracker looking thing. So we have the snow machine and the little scooper where they put it out and then they push it in and got all the little bits. They can put it together. They got little bits for the noses and dots for the eyes. Here we have the plushy booth where they're assembling. Again, they've got the sewing machine thing going on. Essentially the same setup as the other one, but they're doing the plushies instead of the pillows. Um, for this little thing, I think it's just different parts of plushies and then a icicle thing to, I guess, to represent a needle or something. Same way here. The shelving in each little booth is made out of um, a combination of the hover part pieces and wooden 2x4s to make the, the things. I think the walls behind it are orange walls, though it could be something else. I don't know. And uh, the final booth is the one for um, the ship models. So this is what I was talking about earlier, using the um, Shades Eve candy pots as painting pots for different colors. Um, and then, of course, the, the mops as paintbrushes. So they have these naked models, and then they dress them up to make them look like uh, certain ones. Engine parts on this side with the hammer to construct it. And of course, they got the little model plane up here. Combination of beer cans, um, looks like a rocket, some swords for the blades, windows for the wings and the tail bits, um, a file for the little window cockpit area, and then of course it's hanging off with some hanging chains. Don't think there was any other bits that were hanging up from the ceiling. And then the final area is their little employee lounge. Um, it's Dominion chairs, doubled and kind of inset just a certain way. Uh, or in, I think it's table desks, something or other, for the cabinet. Um, tops of bottles for the handles. Excuse me. And I'm not sure what the blue is for table here. It's shiny. It reminds me of the um, the, uh, the 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 uh, um, glowing space suite, but I don't think you could get this nice clean round circle without having that other extra little bit. So I don't know what um, uh, what item that's being used, um, Maddie clarifies that this little box thing, where is that? Yeah, over here. This little box thing up here is supposed to be an alchemy set. So you got the little jar of a specimen, some books, the alchemy books with the little files and stuff, and then <clears throat> poster kind of like you know, like a little boxed kind of a set thingy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, okay, so the top of this table is the actual bottom of the Winterfest post here. Which is interesting. So I think that covers everything. I hope I didn't miss anything. I tried to catch as much of the details as possible of this place. I think that's the fencing again. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that would be uh, Moana Surfrider's plot, One Night in Winter. And we have one more to go to, and then we'll be done for today. This 
is the final entrant into the um, Winterfest housing competition. Uh, James Rose, their plot, um, Super Mall in the Sky. Now, the idea behind this plot, as far as I know, um, the way he explained it to me was um, he wanted to replicate the mall that's in the actual in game holiday um, instance. So, if it looks familiar, that would be why, because it's meant to be a homage to. Uh, the in-game instance that we had, um, we're able to experience during the um, holiday event. So you'll see that um, they've uh, used snow clumps to snowy up the pine trees because we don't have a lot of variety of snow covered pine trees. Um, combination of uh, snowy platforms, um, some of the glacier uh, bits, uh, snow covered stones, uh, lots of colorful string lights, um, just to kind of really do their best to replicate what you see in the game. So here we have the little protostar city strip mall, whatever you want to call it. Oh, it was my pleasure, Maddie. Um, uh, yours is, you know, all of them are fun to look at. Uh, uh, so, you know, I wanted to be sure and show it off. I, I know, like I said, I know uh, Nelia is planning to um, show some of them on the live stream on the 15th. So um, if you're interested in checking out some of the things she says about it or how she, you know, what she shows and how she shows it, be sure and drop in for that. Uh, I think it's 5 p.m. Uh, GMT time that she's planning to stream on the 15th. So something to keep in mind. Uh, now, most of the buildings here are faux, uh, simply because the logistics of this, the pieces that they use to make the buildings um, don't lend themselves to actually being enterable. It's not like it's hollow building parts. It's actual, you know, some of the uh, uh, probably spaceship pieces and um, like, see, that looks like a spaceship piece right there. It's like that little protostar mini spaceship thing. And other bits of protostar materials that um, they had to use to make the buildings, but they necessarily can't actually go through them or make them into... Um, they can't use them like we do the actual building blocks of walls and stuff. So to compromise, they've just made most of the buildings here, though, where um, you see the doorways and stuff but you actually can't go inside them so there are a few however that are um, now I will point out to those that may decide to visit this plot on their own um, this door even though it is a functional door it's not meant to be functional it's supposed to behave as if it's a faux door it's a little confusing that way um, in my opinion, but um, that's how it was explained to me. So if you come here and try to open it, you get that target must be within sight. They did this on purpose. They don't want you going in there. There's nothing there to go into. However, if you go to this one, and while it looks exactly like some of the other faux doors, this one you can actually go inside because it is actually covering up um, an actual interior. Um, which I believe is one of the prefab homes. So <clears throat> uh, this is presumably one of the little gift shops. Uh, the floor, the checker pattern is a combination of, I believe, uh, a tiny blue crystal for the blue um, and then uh, books um, for the dark squares. And then they've just loaded um, lots of shelves and tree shelves and things with uh, all manner of plushies and pillows and gift boxes and the like to really sell the idea that this is a, a holiday shop where you come to purchase some gifts. They even have a little dragon section here. <clears throat> um, countertop is a combination of looks like exile tables and then the Chua a shelf for the, the, the actual countertop itself. 
uh, off in this back room. Um, they've got a little uh, photo op. Um, if, I guess, uh, presumably, uh, Papa Phineas would come and sit, and then you'd go and sit on Papa Phineas's lap. So they have this little camera set up. It's a combination of Cassian pillars, um, an engine piece, uh, a little lever thing here, and uh, some of the metal, uh, a metal briefcase for that little side bit where I guess the film would be located or whatever. As for the floor, um, I'm guessing as to what they're using here, uh, I suspect it's a combination of um, like uh, Oren walls, probably the um, exile walls. I'm assuming they're like really enlarged and just kind of inset so you just see the edge of them. Because um, it looks like the Oren ones, to keep them small and narrow, they've set in several. You can kind of see where some of the seams are. Um, for the tan part, I really don't know what that is. Your guess is as good as mine on that part. Uh, the staircase going up is just hover park pieces turned into a spiral staircase here. The railings are ladders, um, and again, the shelves are just packed with a variety of items from uh, plushies to bombs to stones. To... But here's a little um, flowery area where they've made like some little bonsai arrangements and uh, other mechanical bits. So that's one of the interiors. <clears throat> okay, um, I really don't know what all of the pieces they're using for the buildings are, but I can name a few. Um, these arches here appear to be the new Winterfest fence pieces. Um, uh, these parts, of course, are the uh, metal dividers. Uh, we've got some looks to be Chua pillars for the framing. Um, Cassian walls for the little bits of flooring here. Uh, but what they're using for the main part, like the, I, I can see that this looks like the little ship model, the protostar ship model, but it looks to be like several of these kind of sandwiched together to kind of make this particular shape. Um, but this will be the next part we can actually enter. And you'll notice that they've carried on that candy stripe flooring. Again, I really don't know what they're using specifically for it, but it looks like to me um, like maybe the uh, Dominion shelf for the kind of whitish slick part and then the um, exile walls inset in a certain way to make that design. Um, at the back of this particular room is a little holiday display. I'm not sure really what the purpose of it is other than to kind of show some people in the process of decorating for the holidays. Um, kind of like maybe um, maybe this is like the protostar housing initiative kind of winter festy theme. So they are showing like a little display of an interior of a home and uh, them decorating the tree and such. That would be my guess. So you see there's different little displays with the, all the Papa Phineas and, and Protostar stuff going on. Again, I presume it's a lot of these uh, proto ships and, and uh, such being used for most of the construction. And beyond that, I really couldn't tell you what what is what. <laughs> uh, 
I assume some of these um, bits of lifted ground would be either the um, the bottom of the snowy hills, or it could be um, that they still have some of the uh, massive umbrella trees that they're using in that way. Anyway, um, here we come to the little, um, as you may recall, in the instance there's the Ferris wheel and then nearby the Ferris wheel there's like the eating area. Um, uh, so that's what they've done here. They've got uh, sunken down trees to act as snow covered bushes. And uh, orange tree tables for the tables themselves. Some of them are smaller, some of them bigger, and the bigger ones are just inset a little further so um, that it's not like sticking out really big. Um, and I'll walk around here. This is the other place that you can enter. It's the uh, the little mini proto star house. <clears throat> And I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be. It looks like there's large sized proto guys um, working on making little proto plushies of themselves. Because um, you have some of them here, like they have one's holding a balloon, another one's wearing a mask. There's the, the, beach, um, the beach version. Um, one looks like he's uh, got a sword, and the other one's got, uh, I don't know what, he's the mop dude or something like that. So there's different little like plushy dolls, but it's hard to tell which one's the dolls and which one's the, because they got them all laid out throughout here. So it's a little confusing, um, but there's plenty of them, that's for sure. They're all over the place. Um, up on the little tower here, inside the snow globe. Um, playing cards, drinking tea, <laughs> it's just, they're all over the place. Here's one being captured, as he, I guess, was going for the cheese. One's being stabbed with, uh, yeah, I guess this one fell and cracked his head open, and it's purple goo inside, I don't know, it's a little, I don't know what to make of it. That's the interior of that one. And then uh, come out this way, and you have uh, a little bit of a little kind of a scenic spot to sit. Again, I think it's the uh, snow covered, um, the snowy hills, the bottom of those is being turned to kind of give the, the little raised um, land here. And then they kind of box it in with different kinds of um, either snow clumps, snow covered rocks or glacier pieces to kind of just box it in. So you don't see the, the actual edges that you don't want to show. Um, some of the frozen water as well. Um, from the Ferris wheel, or if you go from the other direction, there's two ramps that lead up. And you get a better um, view um, of the whole place, all the little faux buildings and stuff. Again, there's more seating out here. All the buildings, lots of snow covered bits. You can see this is some of the exile tables for the blue. So primarily most of the blue of the buildings is probably these uh, exile tables, um, just covered with 
you know, the edges are covered with the, the Chua pillars to kind of give that blue proto starish look. Um, uh, I know this person struggled a bit trying to find the right pieces because not even the protostar items themselves, the blue color, the shade of it changes from item to item. So it's really tough to kind of make it all match nicely. Um, but, you know, considering the pieces we had to work with, I think it went, uh, the end product is uh, a decent effort. So again, you know, noticing even the little entryways, uh, they change it up a little bit. So this black and white checkered and the other ones are like candy cane stripes and, and things like that. Uh, there's probably uh, some of the new um, engine parts to get, you know, to make these vent pieces. There's a lot of renown for all of these colored string lights. And thankfully, the colored string lights do not count as lights. So even though we have a limit of 40, those don't affect it. They're much like candles. Um, they don't actually give off any light, but, you know, uh, it still it works nicely for a setup like this. Makes it more bearable, I think. So there you go, that's uh, James Rose's uh, Super Mall in the Sky. And that would be it for our um, house tour. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this last little big hurrah of Winterfest winter stuff. It's not that we won't ever visit any other winter plots. In fact, I know of one that uh, on Dominion side that I probably will definitely be going uh, to later. But um, I just wanted to give a fair showing of all of the contestants that had entered uh, Venus Rising's Winterfest housing competition because I'd already shown two of them and it felt only fair that I go ahead and show the other four. Um, thankfully, there's just the six. Uh, unlike on NA side, they had uh, probably triple the amount of entries. Um, so they have a lot more to, to wade through, but um, I was very grateful that our list was um, small. It would have been nice if there were more. Um, because obviously the more plots we get to look at, the more ideas, you know, we can share. But as far as my job goes, <laughs> it was, uh, it made my job a little easier as far as time. Because um, uh, I actually spent like um, a, a minimum of an hour going through each of these plots um, with a fine tooth comb. And if I had done that with like 20 plus spots, that would have taken forever to get through because, uh, you know, I just wanted to be very super thorough about um, going through them and eyeballing everything from every little detail, nook and cranny that I could get a hold of. So, um, you know, it was fortunate that I only had to do that for six places rather than 20 something, but um, it certainly didn't make my job easier as far as, uh, applying numbers to the categories and things that was still pretty tough and uh but it's done and um we'll see how it how it, you know all the results uh how they go um i think we're still mostly waiting on na to finish there because like i said they had a lot more entries to go through so it's going to take them a little bit more time um but as far as i know the uh, uh nilia plans to do a live uh, live stream on the 15th of January at 5 p.m. GMT time. That's the last I heard. And um, that's when I guess she will make the formal announcement of the winners for both regions. And um, again, we'll be having a uh, first place, you know, the overall winner, um, one for each region. Um, then we have a runner up for each region. And I believe two. Um, honorable mentions for each region. Um, it's not that it has to be evenly split between Exile and Dominion, so it might be two Dominion um, homes that get the honorable mentions. It might be one Dominion, one Exile, or it might be two Exiles. But I believe it's going to be uh, broken down in that way. So most of the um, physical swag that's available will go to the top winner and the runner-up. <clears throat> And then the honorable mentions will receive, I believe the idea is they're going to get some plat and some codes. Um, 
for sure, I, I really can't specifically say, but I think it's been kind of off and on mentioned um, on either uh, Nilia's uh, <clears throat> messages to the judging group or whatever. So just be sure and check on the 15th. And um, I'm sure not only um, will there be the live stream, but there will be posting the results in the forum, probably tweeting them as well. And um, I think Nilia has been doing a lot of it on Tumblr too. So be sure and check all, all of those avenues to find out the, the, the lowdown and the, the big scoop on that. So thank you again for joining me. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the next time, but again, fair warning, I won't be here tomorrow for sure. And it's kind of iffy on Thursday and Friday. Um, if we do come in on Thursday, we will probably um, do a little workshop on lamps. Um, I'm, I'm looking to kind of start removing some of the uh, items or maybe just adding new ones depending on where my decor count's sitting um, into some of the shops and I think we're going to start with the lamp store first and so I want to talk about that so that'll probably be like a little kind of workshop kind of thing of uh, throwing out ideas of how you could uh, come up with different kinds of lamps and stuff so if not Thursday and if not Friday, definitely the following week, because uh, like I said, my son's going into surgery um, tomorrow and uh, will definitely be home the next um, few days um, recovering from that. And depending on how well that goes, um, I may be more involved with that than have time for this. So just fair warning, if I'm not there, don't freak out or anything. Um, I will be back for sure next week. So until then, I wish you good luck on your projects. Um, looking forward to the next holiday kind of theme event going on. Um, be interested to see what people come up with that uh, or for that. And um, have a great week, day, uh, whatever it ends up being that for the next time that I see you guys. But um, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.